Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Kingdom people produce kingdom fruit. What does this look like? How does it actually happen? The epistle reading from 1 Thessalonians lays out a good path. We remember your work that comes from faith, your effort that comes from love, and your perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Did you catch that? It echoes the conclusion of the great love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. Now these three remain, faith, hope, love. They are the core and the anchor of the Christian life. All three components are essential to life with Jesus. And doesn't it sound good for what we aspire to? To be balanced, in harmony, functioning at a high level, achieving your potential, productive to God's glory. A well-rounded life, strong in every area. This takes us beyond Christianity as merely assent to right doctrine or playing a particular part or winning the culture war. This is you and me together as church running on all cylinders in tune with the Holy Trinity. So start with your work that comes from faith. I would describe this as what comes naturally to a believer. The Holy Spirit works in and through baptism to create faith, and then you have a new operating system. There's a new director in charge of your actions. For example, you come to worship here without having to make a major decision about it. After all, this is basic to what a Christian does. You can't really be one if you don't actually worship the Lord. So it's not a persistent question for you. Do I participate in church? Of course you do. Life would be strange and empty without it. Another example. Where faith is at work, you are generally kind and considerate to people. You don't cut in line. You don't take more than your fair share. You don't berate customer service. God has changed your heart and renewed your character and transformed your thinking and it makes a difference in how you act. So you pay your taxes as you should. You give to Caesar what is Caesar's. You honor your parents and provide for your children. You donate to worthy causes that will be a benefit to others. You're glad to hear the word of the Lord. You don't resent it and find it oppressive but rather delight in it and follow it as liberating. You receive God's instruction as the prime guidance for doing good and doing well. This is all faith at work. Next, your effort that comes from love. This seems to be of a different quality than faithful work. 
Such loving effort requires me to be intentional about it. It's not going to happen without my active determination. It's something I have to commit to if anything is going to get done. It takes more desire. It takes more will. For instance, it is work to mow the lawn. It requires real effort to clean the gutters. It's work to vacuum the carpet. It requires real effort to scrub the baseboards. That's why such effort happens only as prompted by love. It takes us beyond the low-hanging fruit of faith and pushes us to next-level productivity. It's a response to the great love Jesus has shown for us. His all-encompassing mercy and compassion that led Him to the cross. We are motivated by His self-giving sacrifice, His 100% willingness to lay down His life for us. And we want to match the depth and vitality of His commitment. So a believer's labor of love would include a regular and ongoing devotional habit outside the appointed church hours. It is consistent and fervent intercessory prayer, not limited to just a few minutes at bedtime. It is speaking up at work from a biblical perspective on a controversial topic. It is talking about the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus even when you're uncomfortable or it's easier to stay quiet. It is inconveniencing yourself to truly minister to another person, to demonstrate love in action, filling your nice words with hands-on help. Where this loving effort is given, you are remembered before our God and Father. And how great is that? Then there's the third part. Perseverance that comes from hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. This implies that it is possible to fall away, to give up on God, to relinquish faith, to grow tired and quit before the race is finished, before the harvest is gathered. So you have to persevere in order to stay strong to the end. I wonder about that in my experience now pushing past middle aged. Not possessing the high energy of youth yet seemingly not near the end. How will I endure? Do I have enough to last. Anytime I'm tempted to renounce, to reject, to chuck it all, this thought persists. If not our Lord Jesus Christ, then what? What else is there? If God is not real, if His revelation to us is bogus, if death is finally the end, what is the reason for anything? 
the promise of everlasting life, the promise of perfect peace, the promise of ultimate fulfillment in the presence of the Lord is what keeps pulling me forward. I can't imagine existence without Jesus in the middle of it. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. That's what hope is. We haven't seen the full expression yet. We haven't gotten to the promised land. But it is a sure thing with God. It is the source of endurance in these challenging and troubled times. People casting about for any dose of pleasure. Violence and oppression gaining ground and claiming victims. Depression and despair exacting a terrible toll. Yet we have hope in Jesus' name. And no matter how difficult things are now, there is light ahead. A brighter day will dawn when all things are made new in Christ. That sustains us in perseverance to the end. I fought the good fight. I finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord will award. And such hopeful perseverance inspires faithful work and loving effort too. That's how kingdom people produce kingdom fruit. Amen. And the peace of God which transcends human understanding guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen.